In this video, I'd like to discuss some of the essential sleeping gear that you're going to want when you're on the trail, either as a survivalist or as a through hiker. We'll be discussing sleeping bags, pads, and liners. Um, to start with, I want to discuss the sleeping bags, and very basically, you have two choices. You can go with down or synthetic. There's almost too much information online to really make a firm decision, but I'll discuss my thought processes, the very basics, and why I've made the decisions I have. Down is warmer, it is also lighter, and it is more compressible. Um, those are some big advantages when you have to carry everything on your back. Um, the disadvantages to down is that when it gets wet, it loses its insulation value. It takes an extremely long time to dry out, and it's pretty much impossible to do a hungover tree in the sun. Synthetics, they are larger, bulkier, they weigh more, um, but they're a lot more durable. They uh, can handle being wet and still insulates, and this one, when you expose the black inside to it, um, it dries out in about two hours in the sun. There's been a lot of advantages to synthetic sleeping bags in the last few years, and companies are constantly coming out trying to get closer and closer to that warmth value that down has. Unless you're in an absolute extreme environment in which you require the warmth of the down bag, I definitely recommend that you stay with the synthetic, especially for any sort of real survival situation in which you can't go inside and draw out your gear, and you're just going to be stuck with being wet. This bag is the North Face Cat's Meow bag. Um, it's a more affordable bag. It costs about $160, and I've been very happy with it. It has great loft. Um, they say that it's rated to about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and I found that to be very accurate. I slept out on the Indina Trace with it, and it was about 20 degrees, and I was plenty warm. In fact, I was able to take my socks off and vent it out a bit to get some air out. So, you'll notice that... Um, The inside of it is all the dark black like that, and um, the old yeah, adage would always be to get out of the tent and the first thing you do with your down bag would be to hang it over a tree and let your own body humidity wear out of it before you can press it into its bag. You can still do that with this, and with this it'll completely dry um, relatively quick, quickly, um, about ten times as fast as the down bag. But it's really not necessary for these because you can pack them up as they are, and in the time that you lay them out the next night they tend to dry out really well. Beyond bags, we want to discuss the pads that you have. The bag is an excellent insulator to keep you and protect you from the cold. But for somebody like me, and for most people, I'm relatively thin and I have a lot of bony spots. My hips, my knees, and my elbows will absolutely freeze on the ground, even inside any sleeping bag. So to protect from the cold, which is really the coldest part of being out, is um, you have your choice of two types of pads. You can use a foam pad or an inflatable pad. These are the best of both of those, I found. This is a Thermarest Ridge Rest Deluxe. It's got two different kinds of foam on it. It's a little bit thicker, and it does provide good insulation. It's an R value of about 2.8. This bag, this weighs about 15 ounces, and I found it to be uh, moderately comfortable for a foam bag. Now, in addition to that, the inflatable bags are a lot more comfortable, and there really is no comparison there. You're not going to contact the ground with these at all. This one, you still have a firm contact with the ground, um, but it is dampened some. In any sort of a real survival situation in which you need your gear to work, I would definitely recommend the foam pads. They are less comfortable, but they weigh a little less. Now they're bulky, but because this is a closed cell foam, it won't absorb any water, and you're welcome to put it on the outside of your bag if you run out of space. Um, these are a lot more warmer. This is a XPED Downmax 7, and it has an R value of 5.9 or 6. Um, I've had three of these, and I've been very happy with all of them. The old one I had had a twist lock mechanism at the top in which you would let the air in and out of. And eventually dirt and grime would get into those, and they always failed. This one, a little bit different. You have a built-in pump here, and then your valves are on the inside. So when you want to pump it up, you just open it up, pump some air into it that way, and everything that you're putting into it has to go through all of the foam of the pump before it gets to the valve. And uh, these aren't supposed to ever break down, which is highly encouraging. That said, you definitely need to use these inside of a tent or on something because they do poke. Um, as much as they're abrasion resistant, it's still basically a balloon. And against rocks and thorns and twigs, they will tear. So in any sort of situation where you absolutely have to have your gear to work, I do think the foam pads are better. That said, for a through hiker, um, these are a lot more comfortable and a good night's sleep is very important. You know, it's a luxury item. They don't weigh anymore. In fact, it's a mere ounce or two between the two of them. Uh, these can press down a lot smaller. In fact, I will be compressing them at the end of this video to show you the difference of them all. 
They compress smaller, but they have to go in the pack. Now we've discussed packs, and I have a larger capacity pack, so I'm okay with that. The last thing to mention is, regardless of your choice of a sleeping bag or a pad, I definitely recommend that everybody has some sort of sleeping bag liner. There's many advantages to it. They don't weigh very much. Um, the number of ways that I've used them is, to start with, on a warm night in your tent, you can sleep in your liner on top of your bag and be plenty warm. You know, they say it adds 15 degrees to your bag's rating. You can't really prove that and it's totally subjective. Um, but they're definitely, they look like sheets and they have a great skin feel to them. The inside of this one, you can tell that they're kind of plasticky. That's to save weight and uh, to increase the water resistance. This has a great skin feel to it, but as much as it may look like a cotton sheet, it really is a high-tech device. It's not a bunch of flannel tied together. You can almost see through it. The textile itself is a, is a fabric called Thermalite, which is made by DuPont. Anytime I see anything made by DuPont, I know it's going to be world-class. I've been very happy with the Grando gloves and all of the other gears that use DuPont. This is made by uh, Sea to Summit. It's uh, the Thermalite reactor bag. It only weighs a couple of ounces. And um, the best advantage to it all is keeping your system modular. With this, you can sleep in the liner on top of the bag, you can sleep in the bag alone, or you can sleep in the liner in the bag. And having that sort of freedom when you don't necessarily know what the weather is going to be is very important. So, thanks for watching, and as I time lapse these, I'm going to continue this video showing you the different compressed amounts and how they all look packed up. So as you can see, these compress quite well. Here's the woman's version of the North Face Cat's Meow, which is just a couple of inches shorter and actually the exact same weight because it has a little bit more insulation. It has fleece bellows in the belly and in the foot section. When you pack your bag, if you let it rest like this, it'll actually compress a lot more in about half an hour or an hour because it gives the, uh, the polyester time to relax and then you can get another inch or so out of it. But this will give you a good idea. To look at the sleeping rolls, these don't compress at all. Uh, the foam roll versus the down, which is much more insulative, much warmer, and much more comfortable. But there's a price point to discuss, because you can get these for about $35, and this is going to run you at least $150. So there's definitely something to consider there. Definitely spend the extra money be sure that you get a good liner. Thermalite, um, everything I've had from Sea to Summit has been uh, excellent quality so far, so I'm going to keep buying their stuff. Anything that says DuPont again, you know, is going to be world class. So, for me, if I had the luxury and could, I would definitely take this. It's a little bit more compressible, and I plan on using this on my through hike at the Pacific Crest Trail. For any sort of real survival situation, I would substitute the down mat and attach this to the outside of my pack for its durability and its multi uses. Thank you very much.